Kedrecht. It's nice to be with you this morning. It's quite lovely outside. It's very fallish and kind of cool in the air. So when I went for my run, oh, I was so grateful to be here just because I was enjoying that lovely weather and the nice crisp air. It was beautiful outside. So I hope you all get a chance to go out today and enjoy the outside. And I hope it's nice where you are. It's very nice here. Um, cool. I'm wearing long sleeves. It's getting about that time of year. And also, I wanted to make sure and remind you that we do have alpaca socks. So for those of you out there that have very cold feet and cannot get warm, I'm telling you these alpaca socks are fantastic. They're called N20s and they are lovely and machine washable, which is great. So I wanted to make sure and remind you about those. So today we are gonna be talking about Kitchener Stitch. Kitchener in Stockinet, Kitchener in Garter, and Kitchener in Ribbing. And I will tell you what I learned this week because I was experimenting with each and trying to learn as much as I could about it. I love doing Kitchener Stitch. In my little doll that I'm making here, this is the one I showed you last week. Well, actually last week I had not started it yet. So here's how far I am so far. And I've done Kitchener on the toes, Kitchener on the crotch of my pants, and on the doll itself I've used Kitchener. So I've used Kitchener in three different areas of this project alone. So Kitchener is a very useful stitch uh, to learn. It's actually a type of grafting. And what your goal is when you're doing Kitchener is to have your work connected together and not be able to find the seam where you worked it. So it is very important when you're doing Kitchener to remember a few things. And I'm gonna be telling you a few tricks and things that were confusing to me when I started doing Kitchener and how I solved it and the things that I needed to know I found very useful. So I'll be sharing those with you. Now, this last week, we had a prize for our, we uh, do a little giveaway every week with our Facebook Live. And to win, you post comments in the comment section and you talk to, let us know what you're talking about. And then you share with other, one, other people and you go ahead and tell us where you're from. Always post photos if you can, because we love to see the projects that you're working on. There are some of you that are so extremely talented. I wish you lived closer because I'm sure that I could learn a lot from you. And I'm learning a lot just looking at your comments on Facebook Live. So that is such a treat. So this last week's prize was for Baby Alpaca Hand Paint Grande. And it's by Plymouth Yarn Company. And it is a lovely yarn. And so this is the prize for last week. And the prize for this week is gonna be for some kibasi. And I used that on this little, lovely little doll sweater here that I'm working on. And I love the multicolors of it. And this is also a great yarn that you can use for socks or you can use it for your baby stuff. And it's 55% cotton, 16% bamboo, 21% elastic, and 8% silk. It's super, super soft. I love how the colorways are really, really pretty pretty and I am enjoying doing this little jacket on my doll. So you'll notice the first thing that on this doll is that I'm using different weights of yarn. When you're making your little projects you can use different weights of yarn and I found that it looks fine. So don't exclude different weights when you're working on projects and I'm using scraps to make mine. Um, so this has been a journey and I'll be talking all about this, telling you what I learned and what I used and some useful tips that I learned from that. So let us know where you're from and what you're working on. We love hearing about what you're working on and we love it when you share your ideas with us because we learn from you. Helen says hi. Hi Helen, and good Deanne. morning. And oh, wonderful, Katie. wonderful having you all there. That's great. So today, um, we again are gonna be talking about Kitchener. I have this little board here, and I've told you before that when I'm doing Kitchener, I like to put a little postcard here, and this one right here shows you, this would be needle one and needle two. And what I mean by that is if you're working on a project and you're lining it up with Kitchener, so that you can Kitchener your project together, you would have two needles. 
and you had a needle one, which is a needle that's closest to you, and needle two would be the one that's behind it. And so that's what I'm talking about, needle one and needle two. Now, these first two uh, knit and a purl are the setup. So I always put a line underneath there. And the actual pattern for doing Kitchener in stockinette is knit, off, purl, purl, off, knit. And I would say that when you're doing Kitchener, anytime you're doing Kitchener, repeat that little pattern. If you have to stop, stop at the end there. And then you'll always know that you're starting at the begin, beginning of a new little repeat because this is done over and over right across your project. So you'll notice on this little sample that I have here, I have some garter stitch on the edge. And when it was Kitchenered, using stockinette method, you don't get your garter ridges. So if you can see right here that the pat this pattern does not work for garter stitch. So on this sample, you'll see that, that it just made knit stitches all the way along. Now there are a couple of other things that I wanted to talk to you about with this. One of them is that it's like a half stitch off and that is common. That's what the pattern does. You can weave in your ends and make it look pretty darn nice, but it doesn't exactly look perfect. But I have to tell you, I've used it on lots of projects, Kitchener Stitch, and you can't find where I Kitchenered. I mean, you couldn't find it. It might take you 10 minutes to find it on a cowl. Um, when it's in a lace pattern. So uh, anyways, it does a pretty darn good job. So when we're doing this, I wanted to point out to you that right here my tension was pretty good and I tightened up on it on purpose right here. So you can see it doesn't, the stitches don't quite look the same. So what I wanted to show you on the back was here's the side with the tension that was good. Here's the side that the tension was too tight. Do you see how it bunches it up? Almost like a three needle bind off. So when you're doing Kitchener, make sure that you're not pulling it too tight because it won't look as lovely as it could if you do pull it too tight. Also, another tip that I wanted to um, point out that I use lots of times, you know that I like these postcards, or this is just um, post-it tape, it has sticky note. And so what I would do when I was doing my pattern, I would go like this. I would use the ruler and I would go along and do that part and then move my ruler down and do this section and then over and over that way. So when you start getting larger patterns like the Kitchener in ribbing, you'll definitely need to use either a ruler or something like this to keep track of where you are because invariably the dog will bark or the phone will ring and you won't know where you're at. And if, you, if you're doing a large project and you lose track of where you are, wherever you lost track and you try to start and if you start in the wrong spot, the stitches don't line up. So it's not a great thing if you lose track. So now let's look at this sample using, oh, also when you're doing Kitchener with stockinette, of course, and you have your work laying down flat, pretend that this is two samples and they're not joined yet. You can see stockinette on both sides, so that is obvious. So, but when you get to garter stitch, it changes, okay? And how it changes is this sample on this side, if you're looking at your work, and you, you're looking at the work that's on your needles, okay? You want to see pearl bumps on the front needle, and you want to see on this back needle, you would want to see knit stitches. Okay, you would want to see knit stitches, and what I'm talking about is right here, the pearl bumps, what I want you to do is lay your work out flat, okay? So you would have on pearls, bumps on the right side and on this left hand side would be knit stitches. And that's how you start with garter stitch. So make sure when you're attempting to do your Kitchener stitch with garter that you have pearl bumps 
on the right side and knit stitches on the left side when you lay them out flat on the table. And the reason why I'm saying lay them out flat on the table is when you actually have your finished project, it's gonna be flat. So if you just look at it like that and you have your pearl bumps on the right and the knits on the left, then you'll be set up to go ahead and start your pattern. Now, once again, we start with a setup. And the setup is always, I don't know if you notice not on all these, but the setup on Kitchener would be the opposite of these first two um, steps, okay? So if it's a knit, you, the, your setup would be a purl, and if it's a knit here, this one would be, oops, this one would be a purl, and this one would be a purl. So, I don't know why they have that like that. It said it in the thing, but normally it would be a purl up here. It would be exactly opposite of what you're doing. But that setup bro says it's a knit. I personally think it should be a purl. It should be the opposite. Because all the other ones are opposite. So this one was maybe um, a mistaken entry on my part. I'm not sure. But I would, I would assume that this should be a purl. And when you do it, you would go ahead and do needle one and then needle two. And then you're ready to start the actual pattern. So you would go knit off purl, knit off purl. And if you see the difference between garter and stockinette, this is knit off purl, purl off knit. And then on garter stitch, it's knit off purl, knit off purl. You see the difference? Just the back needle is different or needle number two, whichever you want to call it. So now we're gonna look at this, take this off and just take a little look and see what the back of it looks like, okay? So it looks really good on the front. It's not perfect on the sides, but it's pretty good. And on the back, the back looks pretty good too. So that is a pretty good Kitchener. I like that. That garter was nice. Now we're gonna be getting to the ribbing. But before we get there, do any of you have questions out there? If you have questions, go ahead and ask me as we're going. You can um, just put them in the comment section and we can respond to any questions that you have. Um, the Kitchener, like I said, is a very valuable skill to have and it joins your fabric together and I don't think there's any other way of seaming your fabric together that works as nicely as Kitchener does for a lot of different applications. So it's really wonderful. Okay, so this next one I'm gonna be talking about is two by two ribbing in Kitchener. Okay, and I looked everywhere on YouTube, on Ravelry, everywhere. And this was the pattern for it, it's quite extensive. And I, I think I found this one on Very Pink Knits and she was talking about ribbing and it is, um, that this is her pattern. So that's the setup. See how this is a knit off pearl? So the um, setup is a pearl because that one's a knit. And then this one's a pearl, so this one's a knit. So I think that one right there was um, an error. It should have been a pearl. Um, so um, anyways, this is a lot more extensive. You have to treat the knit stitches and the purl stitches differently, okay? And also, we had, when I was doing my samples, I just did like um, two little swatches and they were knit to purl to, right? And then I started going along and this is what I came up with. So then I went back and looked at it and said, what is going on, right? So then I looked at very pink knits and if you if you saw what she said it was the they were set up so it was a knit two purl two on one swatch and a purl two knit two on the other swatch. So you had one sample was knit two purl two and the other sample was purl two knit two and then you could actually get them to line up. This sample this one was a little longer than that one so I just bound off on the end. That's what that's from. But you can see as you went along here that this was pretty good. It looked pretty good. 
But if you're doing a long towel and you want to join that ribbing like that, let me show you what it looks like on the back side because it's not great looking on the back side. Oops, another pin. And here's our back side. See how it has little pearl bumps? Doesn't look great on the back side. So Kitchener with, in ribbing, at least with the techniques that I found, was okay. You could use it in a pinch, but it wasn't perfect. So I would say if you're gonna do ribbing and you wanna make a cowl out of it, and you have, um, you wanna just knit a big long piece, don't do that. Just knit in the round and do knit two purl two. I think it will look better. Um, but as far as using the garter and joining it and using the regular uh, kitchenette and stockinette, these two are really lovely. And I would use these all day long. And I love that I learned the difference that the, just in the technique of knowing that pearls are on the right side on your work when you when you've worked it and you're getting ready to join it together and you're looking at that work that's on the needle right there pearls would be on the right side and on the left side it would be knit stitches that is very valuable because if you don't have that set up your garter ridges don't work you'll have too many rows of stockinette so just knowing that is invaluable. And so I thought I would share that with you today. Now what I'm gonna be talking about is my journey with my scarecrow. Oh my goodness, you guys who do toys all the time, you are saints and ever so patient. I had to slow down, enjoy the journey, and boy did I use a lot of my skills. Okay, so let me tell you how I did this guy. And I wrote down all these notes so I could tell you what it was that I learned. Oh, but before I go on, I want to make sure and tell everyone about this kibasi. It's today's drawing, and it is for this lovely cotton blend of yarn. And it, all you have to do is you post comments, you tell us what you're working on, what you like, what you you know, whatever you want to tell us about, and you'll be entered to win. And maybe you, if you enjoy your uh, Facebook lives maybe you can share with other people so we can help as many people as possible so you just go ahead and post your projects and your photos and we you'll be entered to win this lovely yarn this week I really enjoyed knitting with it and it made the cutest little sweater so let's go back to my doll and I'll tell you what I did okay so first I was using leftovers of Kabasi plus and it's a worsted weight yarn right and so I started at the top and I said, uh, well, usually when you bind off the top of a hat, you don't have any more than 10 stitches. So I started with nine stitches and I thought, well, I'll go knit front and back because that's usually when you go to bind off your hat, the last bind off row would be a knit two together. So the opposite of that would be knit front and back. And then I did knit one, knit front and back and then I knit around, and then I did two, knit front and back, and then I knit around, and then I did three, knit front and back, and then my head started taking the shape of kind of a top part of a hat, and I went, oh, that's cool. So I did that, and I worked uh, however long I wanted my face to be, and then I started in the other direction and did knit three, knit two together, and then I did a knit round, and then knit two, knit two together, and then knit one, knit two together, doing knit rounds in between. And I ended with knit two together. Then I started with my neck, right? So I went to the neck, and I know how to do raglan sweaters, so I went ahead and started making a raglan sweater. And it was the body of my scarecrow. I started making this. And of course, when I got the arms, as many stitches as I, as I thought I would want for my arms, I went ahead and put that on scrap yarn and did the body, right? So then I did the body as long as I wanted. I thought I would like it. And then I did a couple of decreases, kind of accentuate the waist a little bit. And you can see I did just a couple on each side. And then this was in the, in the round that I did it, of course. 
and then I got down to where the backside would be or the butt of my doll and I did a few short rows on each side so a little bit of a sock and then so I did like three German short rows on each side and then I went back and I slipped them and then knit across did the you know kind of like I was doing a sock so that gave my um, doll kind of a defined backside right and then when I got done with that I go ahead went ahead and started my leg and then at the bottom I did a little tiny mini sock do, using a short row heel and I thought that was pretty cool the little tiny mini sock and then I used Kitchener at the end to Kitchener the last few stitches and who's this for this is for Evie our granddaughter yeah I, I thought I would make her a little dolly and it doesn't really look like a scarecrow yet I'm not finished yet I need to do the eyelashes I need to do the hair I need to what else oh and the hair I'm gonna be like sewing it in place there's a really neat YouTube video that I'm looking forward to and so I'm gonna be doing the hair and a few other things and then I'll show that to you next week also with the face I just did these little uh, smile here and basically what I did is I slipped the stitch over and it was like two stitches right over the top of one knit stitch and then back two stitches and then over the top of a knit a stitch and then two stitches and then over the top of one stitch and then two stitches and the two stitches were always on the inside of the doll underneath and then I could just shape the mouth the way I wanted to shape it and then for the nose on my nose what I used I found all kinds of um, YouTube videos um, the nose was by Crafty Bunny on YouTube, and um, that was pretty cool because what I did mine a little differently because she had done um, some increases on hers, but I had already finished my head, so I couldn't do increases. So what I did was two duplicate stitches on two stitches, and then one duplicate stitch on one stitch. And so what it did is it made it fatter in the bottom and less fat at the top and then they and she tells you to pinch it and then you just thread your working yarn through and define the nose itself and then you come up and define the nostrils by inserting your uh, working yarn that you're um, darning whatever you call it your yarn into the center and then pull it up a little bit so and then on the eyes what I did was I did a French knot and you can look that up on YouTube the, and that was for the center of the eye and then for the outside there was um, this lady that I found on YouTube and it was called Fiona Goble and she did, she showed me how to do the slip stitches around the eyes and so I thought that was pretty cool okay and then I, I of course you know I'm doing this pattern without a pattern I'm just knitting as I go right it's my knitting adventure I can't ever take the easy way out although I would tell you on Ravelry I did not find a ton of doll patterns um, clothing or otherwise that were free and so um, the one thing I did find is a ton of stuff for American the American girl dolls and so I wanted to show you this was from Terry, one of our staff members here at Alpaca Direct, and she did these little cute little crocheted outfit using, it's using um, Uptown DK. So she did a little hat, it's really cute. And um, that's what she did. And the patterns that she said that she used was uh, the Lucy Hat by Steph Wiley. And that was this one and then she did the pants by Bella Bambina knit and that is this right here and then the um, where is the oh the short sleeve um, top is by American Girl Patterns by Kimations K-I-M-A-T-I-O-N-S so this little top 
So what I have, the short of what I learned on Ravelry is if you want to do doll clothing, buy an American Girl doll because there's all kinds of clothing on Ravelry that you can find that's free and um, then you'll have patterns you don't have to come up with your own. But Helen says she has a bunch of her patterns on American Doll on YouTube. Oh, she does? Oh, can you please share them on this Facebook Live? We would love to find them. Oh my gosh. This doing toys is so much fun. It is so cool. So back to my little scarecrow, right? So here was my scarecrow that, here was my base pattern. These are the two ones that I liked on Ravelry before I started my project, okay? So there it is. And here's what it is evolved into, okay? I haven't put the buttons on yet. I do have them there. And I'm t working on a bell sleeve right now um, for this little jacket. And this jacket, here's what the actual pattern is, okay? A baby pattern. It's by Megan Jones. You know how I've talked to about her many times. She has some pretty cool patterns on Ravelry. And we carry some of her patterns here on our shop. And this little jacket is a free pattern on Ravelry. So you can go there to get the pattern. So I thought, well, I'll make this little jacket. However, me being me, I go right into my making my jacket top down, and then I read the pattern when I get to the ruffle part, of course, because that was the part I needed help with. And um, she did hers bottom up. <laughs> And I'm doing mine top down. I'm like, how am I going to get some pleats going top down when I need all this extra fabric? I, I won't have it. If I put pleats in my current jacket that I had, it would be so small, I would screw up my whole project. So, couldn't do that. So, what I did is I looked on uh, YouTube again, and I found some videos on pleats and um, so what I did is I used the bottom up pleats so I made pleats and brought them up to the point where I thought I would like it sorry Jim um, there's here's my pleats in the back I've never done pleats before and the YouTube pattern that I was from uh, new stitch a day and it's how to make pleats and so, of course, on his pleats, I think he had garter stitch or something, and I wanted to do the seed stitch. And so I did seed stitch on mine, and then I used this three needle bind off, and you see how it leaves a really nice defined line. It's almost like waist shaping, which is pretty cool. So on a three needle bind off, it's done on the inside of your work, and you see how it leaves a line. So, just so you know. But anyways, and the, it didn't, it kind of, I had the three needle bind off right through here and it, it wasn't perfect, but you can see on the edges, it actually makes it kind of cute. And I did a buttonhole right before I did the pleats so that I could have it all buttoned up and then it'll flare out on the bottom. Yeah, and so, and what I'm currently working on right now is some ruffles some ruffles on my sleeve and I'm not sure if I exactly like it. What I'm doing is I did a knit front and back around, then I did a knit round, then I did a knit front and back ag again to four times the amount of stitches. So it will leave a bell, but I'm not sure if it's gonna look the way I want it to. What I usually do is I'll knit a few more rounds and then I'll bind off and see what it looks like. And if I don't like it, I'll just rip it back and try something else. So, um, and that's part of the reason why it's taken me so long to knit this thing is because I don't have a pattern and I'm experimenting. But you can see how cute this jacket is. And the, this p petite panache, if you have a little one in your house and you wanna make a jacket, it's totally lovely. Cause you, right here on these two sides, we had to make, instead of doing center double decreases, what we did was double increases and it made the fold. So I don't know if you can see this on the, the collar of this jacket, but boy, it just wants to wrap right around that baby doll's back. 
and just right into perfect formation. And then I also, on the edge of this, I used the Easy Sewn Bind Off, which is a bind off using a tapestry needle where you insert the needle into two stitches to the left and then one to the right. And then when you do that one, you take it off the needle. So you go two to the left, one to the right, off. Two to the left, one to the right, off. And it made great, a great edge for that collar. So any of you are that wanting to do um, collars for your dolls, if you look at this petite panache, the way she did the collar on her, on, if you just look it up and look the way she knitted it, it was really cool. And you too could do that just by, you know, you can use your own stitch count and then make your uh, collar. And it's, I also used German short rows to make it longer. And that was pretty easy because not a whole lot of stitches, you know. So that was pretty cool. Um, what else did I learn on here? Um, well, okay. Suffice to say, this doll is a journey. Oh, also, just in general, when you're doing your dolls, one I, I did one other project, a sock monkey. And when I did it, I, I was so excited about the stuffing that I just stuffed it as tight as could be. Well, just remember, if you stuff it too tight, you have something that's not as squishy and uh, cozy to cuddle. So um, when you're stuffing your projects, don't kill them with stuffing because um, it takes some of the delight out of the actual project if you do that. And so, of course, I have done that many times. Oh, also, I wanted to finish up with these pants. Okay, there are a ton of doll clothes out there, and what they tell you to do on a lot of the pants is you would be uh, casting on five stitches or so between the legs, right? Sorry, there's a lot of fuzz on here. Any, a lot of fuzz. Five stitches on the legs, but no, 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 no. I didn't like that. What I did is I did increases every other row, um, just like you would do if, um, oh shoot, if you're doing a gusset for a thumb or whatever, it's the same exact thing. But you leave these uh, center two stitches alone and then increase on either side of it. And then at the very end, when I was joining the legs for the first stitch and the second stitch, I did knit front and back. So I increased it another two stitches. What it did is it gave me a bottom that really was so closed. There was no, not much seaming at all to do. It was closed. It was very clean looking. So if you do that with your projects, then I think it'd be you'll be much further ahead than um, casting on the five stitches and having a huge hole to seam. Because when I did mine, it wasn't going to look good. And so um, doing it this way was much cleaner look. Also for my um, down at the bottom of the legs, you can see I did three sets of increases with about four rows in between. So I just went ahead and made it more of a bell and it looked really cute. And then once again, I did the easy sewn bind off on the bottom, which is nice and stretchy and looks good. It matches the top of the jacket. I originally had had garter stitch at the bottom, but once I decided to do the jacket, I had to change it to seed stitch. Luckily, I don't usually weave in my ends until way later, until I'm almost completely finished with the project. Just in case I decide to swap something out and change something, I can find those ends without having to cut the yarn. So that's another little trick that you can use. Um, so in short, doing the doll has been really fun. And all of you that do toys out there, I commend you. You have to have lots and lots of skills to be able to do these toys. And it was great fun. I, I'll be doing more toys. This one, I think I'm gonna give to little Evie, our granddaughter. That's why I'm making it a girl. And um, so I had great fun with that. I, I used different weights of yarn and they I didn't know that I could do that and make it look good, And but it was terrific. And so that was a fun project. And I'll show you next week when I get the hair on. Here's my brown hair that I'm going to be putting on. And I need eyelashes and things. So I'll have this done by next week so you can see it. And um, let's see what else. Oh, my goodness. Let's find and see who our winner is. Okay, so for this last week, we had the baby alpaca grande hand dyed yarn, which is 100% baby alpaca yarn by Plymouth, and Diana Carter, you are the winner. 
Awesome, congratulations. Yes, you'll enjoy knitting with this. And I, I love hats made out of the Grande alpaca. So if you think you might wanna do that, that's a great thing to do with 100% baby alpaca. You could also do a cowl or something, it would be super warm. But my favorite thing made out of Grande alpaca is hats. They keep your head warm, and if your head is warm, it really helps you with the rest of your body. And all of you out there, if you push the like button as you're going along so that we know that you're enjoying what we're talking about. Um, a couple of things I wanted to let you know that we have uh, stock in. Um, we have just received stock in, and this is the Alpaca Yarn Company Tweed, and it is fabulous. So as you're getting ready for this cold winter weather, Think of this yarn, it's fantastic. And then Lamar, look at these lovely colors in Lamar. This is 100% baby llama yarn. Super, super warm, great yarn. I'm gonna be knitting gloves out of this yarn. That's what I wanna do with this yarn. So I'm excited about that. And also Michelle Hunter in beginning of October, if you look on knitpearlhunter.com, and also we're gonna have it posted on Alpaca Direct, it's gonna be with this lovely Sueno yarn. We did get larger quantity quantities in, so that if you wanna participate in that cow with Michelle Hunter, that you can go ahead and do that now. Check on our website, because we do have some of that yarn for sale. And I love this yarn, it's so fantastic. And the project with Michelle Hunter, Hunter is a free knit along and she teaches you all kinds of new skills and I think it's going to be something that will get you on your way to starting to be able to do sweaters and but it's not that difficult it's more like a poncho or something like that so she always has you uh, video tutorials that help you along the way with your projects as you're going and um, I, the giveaway for this week was for regular kibasi, and this is the Pansies colorway, and it's number 812. It's the same uh, yarn that I used on my Knit As I Go Scarecrow, and we were talking today about this Kitchener stitch, and the Kitchener stitch is used for grafting your projects, and it creates a nearly invisible seam if done properly, and then using these little post Post-it notes is a great way to have a resource as you're going along so you can follow it. Now, the two favorites that I found out of these three were the stockinette and the garter. They make a really nice seam and it is fantastic. And the Knit 2 Pearl 2, I'm still working on that. And if I find something that works better than that, I'll let you know. For the moment, these two are my favorites. So I hope that you learned something today. I hope you all have a great week. It's great fall weather out there. Go have fun this week. And I will see you next Tuesday. And next Tuesday, oh my goodness, we are gonna be talking about, let's see what I wrote, okay. It's projects to knit while we watch our favorite football teams. Football season is underway and we're gonna have some great projects that we've been working on while we're watching the games. So maybe they're color coordinated projects that coordinate with our teams or maybe they're not. But you'll see next week when you share with us and that'll be at 9.30 a.m. on Tuesday. So you all take care and we will talk to you soon.